In October, when we launched Dark Power Pro 12 with 1200 and 1500 watt versions, one of the most frequent comments on our social media channels was, whoever needs so much power? Well, our currently sold out inventory tells us there are definitely system requirements out there that justify even a 1500 watt power supply. On paper, the Intel i9-10900X is rated at 165 watts TDP, but like its brother, the 10900K, the 10-core proves to be an utter overclocking monster and in fact, one of the most power-hungry of CPUs. The basic 3.7 GHz clock can certainly be overclocked to 4.5 GHz and that would clearly exceed the 165 watt rating. The 2066 socket is also ideal as a base for the two graphics cards in SLI mode and these require a four slot spacing which limits the motherboard selection. Here we opted for the Creator X299 from MSI and of course the graphics cards. Here we will install the two pallet GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming Pro OC cards which require 350 watts each according to the manufacturer's specifications. Let's see how high we can run up our power bill with these two beauties. We can precisely measure the total power supply to the computer with our power consumption instrument. And we see already that the power consumption of over 290 watts is quite lavish in Prime 95 with a moderate overclocking of 4.5 GHz. Now let's increase our power consumption by running both graphics cards in SLI mode and moderately overclocking the two GPUs. Here we achieve not only gorgeous pictures on a 4K monitor, but also almost 880 watts of power hunger when running Red Dead Redemption 2 with nearly all possibilities for graphics enhancement such as maximum super sampling with everything on Ultra, except for motion blur which actually nobody needs. In games the performance of CPU and GPU varies significantly, which is why we now shift up a gear and start a rendering task in Blender for which the CPU and both GPUs run under full load. The rendering performance of this infernal machine is enormous. The computer manages to render an image in only 37 seconds. At 24 frames per second, our monster would need just 15 hours to render one minute of film. That's crazy! In another project, we saw extreme differences in what is calculated at which point. For the hair, for example, we reached power peaks of 1049 watts. Nonetheless, there are graphic card models that draw even more power, system configurations that are equipped with more memory, extra hard drives, LEDs and peripherals and smartphones are also able to be fast charged via USB and so on and so on. Thus, a 1200 watt supply is certainly the minimum for just this setup. And what we did not try in this case was to run several tasks at the same time, which would naturally attain a maximum in power demand. Apart from the titanium efficiency, the digital control, the technology built in and the extreme longevity and reliability of the Dark Power Pro 12, there are definitely systems that not only want to impress with the shiny power supply, but actually need its high performance. A bit of power in reserve is always important because you never want to run a power supply close to its maximum. This certainly justifies having a 1500 watt version for the Dark Power Pro 12 and it has already found plenty of enthusiasts. Oh yes, these systems are definitely something for enthusiasts. With this in mind, stay quiet.
Hi guys, I'm Terrence. Today I'd like to introduce you to the new V Gold series. About five years ago, we had the original V series, one of our most successful power supply lines. We decided it was time for an upgrade, so today we have a whole new line of 80 plus gold V series power supplies. The V Gold series comes in four wattage levels, 550 watt, 650 watt, 750 watt, 850 watt. They're all the same internally, but each one has a different number of connectors and cables. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you research that and check to make sure you get the one that works for your system. You can see right on the front of the box how many connectors each one has. So you can make as well a decision as you need. You can also get all this information online. So whether you're in store or online, you can make sure that you can make an informed purchasing decision before you buy anything. Today we're gonna to unbox the V750 Gold. So let's do that right now. First thing you'll notice, New packaging, we wanted to do something more colorful, but also more informative. So on the front, you're gonna see the product, you're gonna see the warranty label, 10 year warranty for the entire V Gold series, 40 plus fanless mode, special feature, and the 80 plus gold badge. You're also gonna get a lot of other information on our packaging. Now we have special features, cables, fan and efficiency curves, lots of information, and you're gonna see this for all power supplies, not just for the V Gold. So now let's open the box. Simple to open from the side, just flip it open. First thing you'll get is your user manual. Power supply is covered with foam and you're also gonna have your cables in a bag. Let's do the cabling first. Cables come in a nice nylon bag with a Velcro seal, so easy to open. First thing you'll notice, cable ties. You have three Cooler Master branded adjustable ties for the front of your system so you can change your system as much as you want. You also have regular zip ties for the back of the system to keep everything nice and neat. Your mounting screws, of course, and then all your cables. So each of the cables for the power supply are clearly marked. So you can see like PCIe, for example, so you know exactly what to use when you're building. So as long as you're reading, you'll never make a mistake. With the V Gold series, our PCIe cables are 16 AWG, which is thicker than your standard industry 18 AWG, so you're gonna get better efficiency and lower ambient temperatures for an overall better performance. So again, the cables differ from each model in the line. So this is all the cables you're gonna get with the V750 Gold, but the 550, 650, and 850 will have different numbers. So you gotta make sure you check that before you buy anything. So that's the cable, so now let's move on to the unit itself. Easy foam to remove. Then your power supply comes in a nice bag. Two drawstrings, Cooler Master label on the front. Easy to open. So as soon as you take it out, you're gonna see product name. So in this case, V750 and the Cooler Master logo. This is for the fan down installation. If you wanna do a fan up installation, you're gonna see the rating label. This is gonna have all the information about the power supply. Again, you can get all this on the packaging and on our website. Let's look at the modularity. So you have full modular cabling. Again, different number of connectors for each one in the line. It's clearly marked so you know exactly where to plug all your cables. Let's look at the fan. We have a 135 millimeter FDB fan. This is gonna give you very, very quiet performance, but also good cooling. 40% fanless mode. Looking at this side, you have the hybrid switch. So what this does is it controls the fanless mode. So if you wanna have 40% fanless mode, you make sure it's on. And then for the first 40% load while you're working, completely silent. If you don't want the fanless mode and you want 100% fan all the time, you just turn it off. It's very easy to use. So that's the V Gold, available now on all brick and mortar sellers and online retailers. You can get it in all four models around the world. It's a great power supply for regular computing, gaming, high-end use, anything where you'd want a gold. It's a nice size, fits in pretty much any case. If you have any more questions, make sure you check out our product page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi, John from Corsair here. Today we're gonna to talk to you about the RMX power supply. The RMX is a high performance, fully modular power supply with a focus on ease of installation. It shares a lot of similarities between the RM and RMI, but there are a few key differences. First off, the RMX is 80 plus gold certified, fully modular, uses a quieter, longer lasting rifle bearing fan with a zero RPM fan mode, much like the RM series. However, for the RMX, we've used 100% Japanese capacitors to ensure long life and best in class performance throughout its life. And this has allowed us to give the RMX a seven year warranty. Just like the RMI, 
It's rated for full output at 50 degrees Celsius. One of the key differences between the RMX and RMI is that the RMI has Corsair Link compatibility. So if you don't think you'll need the software monitoring capability of Corsair Link, but you want the same quality components and reliability of RMI, then the RMX is a great choice for your build. The RMX is available in a wide range of wattages, all the way up to 1,000 watts. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you have any questions, please check out our forums, and don't forget to subscribe. If you like the video, please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel.